Okay, hello and welcome to the Financial Literacy Webinar with the Bank of Canada Museum. We would like to begin by acknowledging that we are meeting on the land of the First Nations, Inuit and Métis. We pay our respect to the Indigenous peoples across the country and their ancestors for their immeasurable contributions to this country. My name is Heather Montgomery. I'm an Education and Evaluation Specialist with the Bank of Canada Museum. I want to remind you that this session is being recorded and is subject to the Bank of Canada's privacy policy. If you'd like to enable live captions, please click more on the menu on your screen and select language and speech and turn on live captions. Please make sure you select English as a spoken language and press confirm. The Bank of Canada Museum is an interactive museum about the economy in Ottawa. We also educate about the role of the Bank of Canada. The Bank of Canada has several core functions. Funds management, the Bank of Canada is the banker for the Canadian government. Um, currency, the Bank of Canada designs, issues, and produces all Canadian banknotes. Financial system, the Bank of Canada promotes safe, sound, and efficient financial systems within Canada and internationally. Monetary policy, the Bank of Canada influences the supply of money in the Canadian economy using monetary policy to keep inflation low and stable. And finally, retail payment supervision. The Bank of Canada will soon be responsible for supervising payment service providers and making sure that Canadians' ways of paying are safe and reliable. The museum is also home to the world's most complete collection of Canadian currency. For educators, we have a variety of online lesson plans and a virtual program, and we also have on-site programs if you're ever in the area. Everything is always free and always offered in English and French. We've specifically designed several resources to respond to new financial literacy curricula Canada-wide, but particularly in Ontario and Alberta. I'm going to begin by showing you our website and where to find our resources. And then I'll show you some of our math and financial literacy resources, first lesson plans, and then the activities and games. Please feel free to write out your questions at any time using the Q&A function. I'll answer them at the end of the presentation. You won't be able to share your video or audio, but you will be able to type any questions that you have. So let's start by sh signing onto our website. Again, you can find our website at bankofcanadamuseum.ca. You want to first click on the learn section at the top here, and then navigate down to resources by type and select lesson plans. You'll see at the side, you can filter by grade or you can filter by subject. And each lesson plan has a descriptor of what the lesson plan actually has, the subject areas and the grade levels that you can see. So you'll be able to find whatever you're looking for. Um, this section has lesson plans, but we'll also be showing you the activities and games section as well. So let's start with our financial literacy resources um, and specifically in grade one. So Exploring Coins and Banknotes is our first grade one resource, and this will help you explore Canadian money with your grade ones. All of our financial literacy lesson plans include worksheets that you can download and print for your class. Um, the first part of the lesson is the same on every lesson. You can see we have the big idea, the duration of the lesson, the grade levels, subject areas, learning objectives, and any materials you might need for your classroom. This is also where you'll find the worksheets that you can download. So let's take a look at the worksheet for this lesson plan. So it starts with exploring the different symbols on coins and then on the banknotes. And then it has a little section where the students can do a survey of their classmates' favorite banknote. And then a section where they can practice uh, counting uh, coins there and then finally they match the bills to different items and trying to understand how much each bill might be worth. Now let's take a look at our grade two lesson plan. This one is called counting money and making change. There's a number of worksheets in this one. You can download them either all together as a package using the first link or separately if you'd like to customize the lesson plan. For all of our lesson plans, we have a suggestion of how you might actually run the lesson plan, but we also provide a lot of uh, ability to customize which parts you might use in your classroom. So take a look at the lesson plan and use what works for you in your classroom. I'm also going to show you a resource that's helpful for this one. This is our 
um, printable play money. So you can print this out, cut it out and use it in your classroom. This is our most popular educational resource on our website. Um, if you ever get a chance to meet us at a teacher's conference someday, we often give away packages of these banknotes printed on durable polymer, just like our real banknotes. So if you can ever find us at a conference, it's a good reason. <laughs> so if you'd like to take a look at the worksheets for this one, you can download the whole package together. The first two worksheets do skip counting using money, so first coins and then banknotes. The third activity is about counting coins. It gives you a really nice chart for organizing your work. You could use this format over again for practicing with different combinations of change. Activity four has some word problems to solve with money, and activity five asks students to count their money to buy specific ice cream. In activity six, they have to match the combinations of money. And in activity seven, there's more real world examples and activity eight on how to use money. We always offer the answer sheet at the, at the end to make your life easier. So you'll find all the answers for these worksheets at the end of each um, package as well. Now let's take a look at our grade three resource. This one is called Representing Money in Many Ways, Addition, Fractions, and Equivalents. So again, this one has a number of different worksheets. You can use our Play Money with this one as well. You open it, the whole package together, and you can see all the different activities. Um, so the first activity is a little grocery shopping uh, activity for your students. And the second activity is calculating change. And the third page is really cool. This is a wheel that will help students understand how money is represented as fractions. And you can even print it out as a poster for your classroom so they can refer to it as they do the different lessons. And then activity, the next two worksheets can, you, you can practice how to do these fractions and convert and divide money between two people here. And again, all of our answers are at the end there. At the end of every lesson plan, you'll see this section called extensions. And this will give you an option to see different things you might follow up this activity with, whether it's our resources or other trusted resources that you could use or just ideas of what you might do in your classroom. So another way that you can customize for different types of learners. Now I'm gonna show you one of our interactive games called Trade Rules. This, um, this lesson plan is actually a little game and it introduced basic concepts like consumers and producers, goods and services, and trade. So you'll want to open the trading cards and print two copies of these cards, fairly straightforward. And that will be used in activity two for the training game. In activity one, we walk you through introducing key vocabulary like economy, goods and services, consumers and producers. And again, you can read through and take the parts that work for you and your students. If you have a split class, we had some questions about that in the registration form. If you have a split class, this is a really good way to customize for different levels of learners in your classroom too. In activity two, that's where we have the game. Um, so we introduce game, the the, the idea of trade through this game. So in round one, students are given a random card and asked to rate how happy this item makes them. In round two, students are allowed to trade within a small group of four. This simulates a local trade. So does this increase everyone's happiness of their items? And then in round three, students are allowed to trade their item with anyone in the class. This simulates global trade and you ask, does global trade increase the overall happiness of the class? What are the challenges and advantages? And again, at the end, we have some suggested extensions for this activity and some key um, vocabulary that you can use in your class as well. The next game I'll talk about is Trading Planets. Trading Planets is actually, um, most of the curriculum links are in social studies, but I think it's a really great way to introduce, again, some basic economic classes and do a cross-curricular um, 
activity with your students. It's very interactive. It's for grades four to seven. It's actually based off of a program that we do on site for elementary students. Uh, and the idea is uh, it's about the difficulty to trade without a common currency and how supply and demand can be influenced by outside factors like environmental conditions and labor forces. So let's open the template here. You can see there's a lot of different um, information provided there for you and a bunch of cards. So this game is very fun, but it can be a bit of work to set up for the first time. So it does, I definitely suggest reading through all the rules a few times before you run it the first time. And again, if you ever have a chance to meet us at a teacher's conference, we usually bring sets of these cards and the rule sheets, and we're very happy to walk you through how it's all set up. And it's really a lot easier to do the second time that you do it. So the premise of this game is that um, Earth is on a trade mission to planet Plutopia, and the Earthlings have brought many resources to trade with the Plutopians. Both planets have different reasons for wanting specific resources. In the first round, each student receives one resource card and one goal card. See these cards here? And they will be put in small groups, and their objective is to trade for their goal. Their team will get points if they can complete their goal. Usually in this round, not many trades are completed. So the wrap up of this round asks students to think about how we might be able to make trade easier. In round two, the students are introduced to environmental and labor, sh labor shortages that make some of the resource cards unavailable, but they're also allowed to trade with all of the students in the class. At the end of this round, we introduce the idea of common currency and how currency makes trade that much easier. In the final round, students are given space bucks from the Intergalactic Central Bank. You can see those at the end here. There you go. Um, and so they're able to purchase any resources they want directly from the Plutopians or the Earthlings. And again, at the bottom of this lesson plan, we have some extensions and we also have some features of different commodity and fiat currencies from our collection that you can talk about in your classroom. Now let's take a look at some of our activities and games. Um, to get to the activities and games in the learn section of our website, you'll want to go back to learn and scroll down and select activities and games as the resource type. The difference between our activities and our lesson plans is the length and the style. So activities tend to be shorter and they're designed for one-off hands-on experiences that can be done either at home or in the classroom, whereas lesson plans are a little bit longer and designed to be done specifically in a classroom. So the first one that I'm going to show you is called needs or wants. So this activity is for kids ages five to eight, and it's a fun little card game where kids can sort different things into needs and wants piles. So you can download the worksheet in either color or black and white. See this here? So kids are given these cards and they have to decide whether it's a need or a want by sorting them into different piles. There is no right or wrong answer. Some things are needs for one family and wants for another, and we open that discussion with the kids as well. So this activity also helps you explain what needs and wants are. The next activity I'll show you is called Growing Your Savings. This activity is for kids ages six to 12, and it's about setting financial goals, earning and budgeting. It helps you talk about setting savings goals, long-term and short-term goals, and kids will set their own goal for something they want to buy or do that costs money and create a plan to earn that money. So the template here is a goal tracker. And what you do is you fill in a financial goal in the center of the flower and each petal is an activity you're going to do to earn that money. So you can cut out color and design your own flower. And as you progress through the saving, you can fill out the, the stems have a tracker that you can fill out to reach your goal. Now I'll show you our piggy bank activity. This little piggy bank activity is for kids ages six to eight. It's a fun template to color and build a piggy bank, and it includes a lot of ideas of how to talk about saving with kids. So this is the piggy bank. You can even make three different piggy banks, one for saving, one for spending, and one for giving. So to represent the be beginning of a budget. The next activity I'll show you is called Avatar Market. This activity is for kids ages six to nine, and it's 
more practice for identifying and counting coins, but it also encourages kids to make financial decisions and budget. Uh, so I'll open the template here. This little guy here, this is called an avatar. He's sort of the mascot for our museum. So if you ever get a chance to visit the Bank of Canada Museum, you can create your own avatar at the beginning who follows you throughout the museum. So we use this um, in some of our kids programming too. So each kid gets their own avatar and there's a bunch of different accessories that you can add to these avatars. And then you act as the merchant and you're able to put prices on each of the accessories and you give each kid a different amount of money that they have to spend. So they have to just make decisions about what they want to spend money on. And if possible, you can give them either real coins or the play money to count out their own money for that. And the final activity that I'm going to show you is called the economics of supper time. This one is for students aged eight and up, and you could use it as a take home activity or you could adapt it for a simulation in class. I'll open up the worksheet here. So in this activity, children are given a budget for a meal or for a week, and they use this budget to make a grocery list of items that they need and the estimated price that they can find either online or in printed flyers. They then use the Canada Food Guide to look at different percentages, what percentage of your food should be in each category. And children can cut and paste from flyers to make visual representations of what a healthy diet look like, looks like, and older groups can calculate those percentages while younger groups can just organize it visually into this pie chart. Um, um, students could go grocery shopping at home or you could create a little grocery store activity in class for them. And now I'll talk a little bit about our virtual program called All About Money. You'll find that under school programs and it's the first one here, virtual program. So All About Money is a really fun way to introduce money to your students in grades one to six. Uh, it's a virtual program, so one of our guides will come and join you in your classroom virtually and talk about the characteristics of money, past and present forms of currency, and Canadian bank no notes and coins. Um, booking is actually open for this program if you'd like to try it out this fall. Just like everything else on our website, this program is free to book. There are lots of other educational resources to explore on our website for older grades and different subjects too, if there's anything else that you're interested in. We're also always making new lesson plans. We're working on some currently for grades four and five that are specifically related to financial literacy curricula. If you wanna find out more about our resources, if you're not already signed up for our newsletter, you can do so on our website. Just fill out the little form here and you'll be the first to know about everything that we're doing including when school programs and virtual programs launch. We only send out uh, emails about three to four times a year. And if you're ever in Ottawa, we also have a lot of on-site programs that you can do uh, and a really fun interactive museum to visit. So now we have some time for questions. If you have any questions, you can type them into the chat and I'll just bring up the PowerPoint again. So I have a question, what resources do you have for other subject areas? That's a great question. So we have resources for um, social studies. I'm actually gonna go back to our website and share that to answer your question. Um, so we have a lot of social studies resources. So if you click through to kindergarten and grade four, you can see we have the financial literacy ones. We have design your own banknote, um, which is an interesting way to practice either through art or social studies, thinking about who goes on our banknotes and how that's decided. Um, we have some fun little activities about pirate treasure. We have some really interesting um, Q and A's about how things you should know about money, common questions we hear about money, um, and then some other fun activities here too. And for older grades, we have things about inflation and other economic terms. And we even have one about um, environmental uh, life cycle of a banknote. Any other questions? Do 
you have any videos for the classroom? That's a great idea. We do actually have videos. So if you go to, through Learn and then you go through to Video Discussion Guides, we have a lot of really great videos that are actually, uh, many of them are from our museum. So these are videos you'd be able to see if you came to visit us. We have one about the history of the Bank of Canada. We have one about externalities fintech um, we have one about inflation and funds management the life of a polymer banknote is very popular if you take a look and click through to these videos you'll see that you can watch them here on the website but you can also we also give a little discussion guide for these website for these videos so you we talk about what key concepts are included in the videos and then we suggest some questions you might ask and a discussion you might lead with your group and then again at the end we always have links to other resources that we have that might be helpful for that How long is a virtual program? Is it available at any time during the school year? So yes, the virtual program is 45 minutes long and it is available um, from September until April. And we have specific days that are available. So if you click on to All About Money, um, and then you click through to our register online, you'll be able to see all of the dates that are available when you fill out your information and just keep in mind as you're registering that all of these times are in eastern um, so if you're somewhere else in canada you'll have to make that conversion yourself but you'll be able to see as you click through it what, what time that is in your time zone as well Are there virtual sessions for the grade three to five level? So I definitely recommend this All About Money program for the grade three to five level. Um, it's a really great program um, that will really introduce some of the, we, we modify it a little bit for younger groups and then for the three to five range, we talk a lot about what money actually is and how we decide what money is as a society. And do all of the activities align with financial literacy expectations in the math Ontario math curriculum? Yes, they do. Um, so the Ontario math curriculum and the new Alberta financial literacy curriculum were the two big inspirations behind creating these resources. So the, the curriculum links are all included on the website under curriculum links. You'll be able to find them there and that you'll find that they match very closely to both the Alberta and the Ontario curriculum. More questions? See someone raising their hand, but we're not actually able to enable your video if you want to type your question in the chat. Is this in line with the BC curriculum is the next question. Yes. Um, so when we set out to make our resources, we look at the curricula all across Canada and we map out where the commonalities are and make sure that it fits to all of the curricula that um, for all the provinces. So yes, it will match with the BC curriculum as well. It's possible sometimes you might see that you would want to do one of the grade three lessons and one of the grade two lessons and kind of combine them to make, meet specific objectives. But that's why we make them really flexible to make sure that you can use them in your classroom that way too. Any more questions from anyone? Oh, I see one more question. 
Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> um, so thank you very much for joining us today. And um, I did want to say that if you have any more questions, please feel free to send us an email at museum muse at bankofcanada.ca. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at, at BOC Museum. And we're happy to help you with anything, any questions you have about how to run these programs. Um, we've also posted a, a survey link in the chat if you're able to um, if you're able to fill out that survey for us, we would really appreciate it. Um, it helps us plan for these in the future, and we hope to do more of these webinars in the future. I just see one last question in the chat. Can you get polymer printed coins, et cetera, if you order them? So right now we don't do special orders for them, um, but we are hoping to see a lot of people at teachers conferences because we're going to be at a lot of them this fall. Um, and it, they do look great when you print them on your printer, and you can print them in black and white as well. Great. Again, if you have any questions, please send us an email. Oh, yes. And Aliza just posted the survey link in the chat, so you can take a look at that. Thank you so much for joining us.